Hello everybody, my name is Iceberg Lettuce, and today we are here in Minecraft 1.17 Snapshots where I have built a glow squid farm using the new underground water mob spawning mechanics from pre-release number 3. So uh, if you weren't aware, in Minecraft 1.17 pre-release number 3 they changed the spawning mechanics for glow squids and axolotls to require them to have stone five blocks under them as well as complete darkness which makes making farms for these guys a little bit harder now. But I figured out a way to do it that is pretty survival friendly, so that's what I'm going to be showing off today. So without any further ado, let's get to the farm. So this is what the farm looks like. It's obviously a pretty simple setup. We just have uh, 16 water columns, each with um, 6 blocks of water in them. The top one being the water source, and that has a fence post in it to stop axolotls from swimming up there and uh, not jumping out onto the magma blocks. So obviously all the mobs should jump out onto the magma blocks, they'll die. Their items will get picked up by a hopper minecart, which will transfer everything to a chest, and yeah, so you'll be able to get the items. We also have some uh, tinted glass up here just to stop light from getting through, so this whole area is completely dark. These magma blocks glow slightly, but they are two blocks down, which means they don't affect the light level of the actual water sources. You could obviously use any solid block you wanted up here in survival mode, but I use tinted glass because it's easy to see through and just makes it look nicer. So this looks pretty similar to a glow squid farm, right? Or not a glow squid, a regular squid farm. But the difference here is that it's way shorter. Usually with a squid farm, you'd make it way taller. And so the reason for this is pretty simple. With a squid farm, uh, to spawn proof the area around it, all you need to do is get rid of all the water in the rivers because that's the only areas where the squids can spawn. But the problem with glow squids and axolotls is they can spawn in underground water in any biome. So in order to spawn proof an area around this thing, you would need to find any underground water uh, anywhere around this farm, which would take forever in survival mode because you can't see through the ground and stuff. So unless you wanted to build a perimeter, uh, your best bet is to make the thing shorter so you can just AFK really high up and make it so this is the only thing that is loaded at any given time. Uh, you would be able to get higher rates if you were able to kill them faster with fall damage or make more spawning spaces, but considering it's just glow ink and this produces a pretty decent amount, this is like what I got from maybe 5 or 10 minutes of AFKing, so yeah, it's a pretty decent amount for really uh, what you'll need with this item, so uh, there's not really much point in trying to make something taller or faster. Alright, so on to the actual tutorial of how to build this farm. I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. The first thing you're going to want to do is press F3 and G to turn on chunk borders because you're going to want to build this thing inside of a single chunk. So you'll go to the edges and mark these out here just where the four corners are and you're going to want to dig down in this chunk until you are standing at Y level 53. So I'll do that real quick. Alright, so as you can see, we now have uh, a big hole in the ground that is one chunk big, and uh, we have dug down so when we're standing on the ground, oh, that's the screenshot button, uh, when you're standing on the ground, you are standing at Y level 53, so uh, now what you're going to want to do is choose a direction and dig out, just one block out, and this is going to be where the rail is going to come around and loop back around and this is also where we are going to pick up our items so you're going to want to uh, i did four here four hoppers just like this with two of them facing in the wall and then two of them going into those hoppers and this is where your actual chest is going to go and so you can place the chest here or however you want to make your storage system and you're obviously probably going to want some sort of way to access that chest so you can make some bubble columns or a room you can decorate however you want but either way this is where the items will actually end up. So next you're going to want to place in the rails and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Okay, so for the powered rails part, I'm going to assume you have a gold farm and a ton of powered rails. If you don't, then you can just redesign this any way you'd like so that you can use less powered rails. But if you have a ton of powered rails, then you might as well just do this. So you want to count out eight blocks from here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And on this eighth block, place a redstone block and just... That's not right. Place redstone blocks going all the way across. You could also use uh, redstone torches underneath solid blocks if you'd like. So from here to here, one block away from the edge, and this is going to power all of our powered rails. We don't need rails on these two edges. So first go out like this, and then when you get to the end, normal rails turn around and come back. 
until you get right here, and then like that. So you'll want it to turn around again and come back. And from here, you can just go around and back over and over again. So I'll do that real quick. Alright, so once you've gotten to this point, then you should have rails zigzagging back and forth to the edges of the chunk border for almost the entire thing, just one away from the edge on both sides, and powered rails going here, and obviously from here you can just put normal rails to make the turn, put a redstone block somewhere in the middle to power the powered rails, and just like that. And so now you have an entire setup that goes all the way around, so now just add a hopper minecart into the thing and give it a push, and now it is going. So now that your minecart is going, the next step is to add the magma blocks, and the magma blocks are going to cover the entire chunk, this entire layer right above where the rails are. So just go back and forth over and over and fill up this entire area with magma blocks. So now that you have the entire area covered with magma blocks, if you go underneath you'll be able to see the minecart is still going, that's good. So next we're going to want to add the stone blocks that will allow the squids to actually spawn. So you're going to want to go one, two, three, four out, and one, two, three, like this. So this block should be right here, and from here every third block you're going to want to add another stone. So one, two, three, one, two, three. And then do the same thing this way, so one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and fill in the area in between. Alright, so you should have, in the end, 16 stone blocks evenly spaced out. And next, we are going to need 64 fence gates. So the easiest way to do this, i found, is to place one uh, just temporary block, I'll use polished diorite, um, on top of all of the stones, and just completely surround each one in fence gates. So I, in creative mode, like to go just back and forth with the fence gates, placing them all around each side of this thing. First we're going to go like this, and then after we do that, we'll go this way. But you can do this any way you like, as long as you surround each block with four fence gates. Okay, and once all the fence gates are placed, you're going to want to open them all up and destroy the temporary blocks you placed. So once you have every single fence gate placed and opened, you're going to want to create a layer of solid blocks. Uh, when you're placing this, you should be standing on Y level 63, but these blocks will be at Y level 62. So just cover the entire chunk in whatever solid block you feel like using today. Now we're going to want to break the blocks above our stone blocks. If you use something like tinted glass that you can see through, this will be a little easier, but if not, just go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, just like before, and you should be able to see the stone block right underneath. Now just do the same thing where you go over uh, three blocks and break the third block every time, and just go all the way around. And just like that, you should have 16 holes total. Um, each one should be above a stone block. It's actually kind of hard to use tinted glass for this because uh, it's a little hard to tell where the holes are and where they aren't, but after you do this, you're going to want to grab a uh, regular fence and just place it inside of each of these holes. And now that you've done that, it is time to actually put the water into this thing, so just place a water source on each of these fences. And the last step here will be to cover up all of these water sources and fences here with any solid block that doesn't let light through, 
using tinted glass again, but this can be whatever. If you're feeling particularly overkill today, you can use a downwards facing dispenser and make a farm you can turn on and off. After this, the farm is pretty much built and you are going to want to make an AFK platform and you're gonna want to build this up at Y level 160. If you want to make a platform you can just fly to with an elytra, that works. If you don't have an elytra and you want to make a scaffolding ladder, that works too, but just build some sort of platform up here. And uh, if you want to keep the rates as high as possible, make sure to only use transparent blocks such as glass because any solid blocks will cause the game to check for spawn places up here. And if it does that, then it's not spawning as many mobs down there. So you just need to keep that inside this chunk. You can use solid blocks outside of this chunk area, but inside of this chunk for your spawning or your AFK platform, you're going to want to only use transparent blocks. And so as you can see already, if I grab a uh, spyglass here, you can look down and watch the mobs start to spawn. You can already see some glow squid spawning and dying, and those items are getting picked up by the hopper minecart and collected. So congratulations, you now have a glow squid farm. So that's all I have for this video. I hope you all enjoyed watching, and see you next time, everybody. Bye.